safe. There is nothing more important than teaching your young drivers how to operate a vehicle properly and not be afraid of the vehicle. It's a, it's a huge machine with a lot of different problems that you would not anticipate if you don't understand what's happening. And Dave Stahl's here to tell right. us all about that. Doug Herbert, NHRA top fuel driver back in the day, uh, had a terrific, hor horrific accident within his family, started a break. You kind of want to give us a rundown? Yeah, absolutely. You know, so uh, 2008, right? Everything's going great. I'm, we're getting ready to start the 2008 season and and go out there and win the championships and yeah. do all this stuff. Yeah. And then uh, January 26, 2008, I got the phone call that my two teenage boys were killed in a car crash less than a mile from my house. Oh my gosh, that's and uh, obviously the wind my went life. right out of your sails in a car right. accident. In a car crash. And what yeah. happened? What I mean, what were the details? What did they do? Uh, Skid out or what did they, they do? They were speeding. Yeah, my my son John, 17 years old, was speeding, driving fast. You know, and unfortunately not doing things that probably we hadn't done when we were 17 before. You know, when you're 17, you think you're bulletproof, you know everything. You're a son of a race car driver, all of that in your head. So this is what I'm talking about because when, when, when young people think they've got it under control, they really don't know yeah. enough. They yeah. really don't so, have it under control. So they turn to you and what, what do you do? Well, the fact is that uh, car crashes is, is the number one cause of death for teenagers. Right. And I didn't know that until it affected me by my own two sons. So. I made the commitment right at that time. Okay, I'm gonna teach their friends about being defensive drivers. I got some of my friends together from Highway Patrol, some race car guys. Let's figure out what's causing these crashes and let's do some uh, specific exercises to get the kids in the car to learn more about vehicle dynamics and just all the things that are causing the crashes. Well, that happened and then in 2008, we trained 50 teenagers and mm -hmm. then my phone started ringing and then, you know, other parents, hey, I've got another kid coming along. When, when are you gonna do that again? So it's kind of snowballed and now uh, we've trained over 35,000 teenagers, wow. over 35,000 families. Yeah, 35,000 families. And tell and, the uh, unique thing amazing. about it as far as how much it costs. Well, that's just it. It's a it's a charity. It's done in honor of my sons, and I don't want somebody to not come because they can't afford it. You know, a class like this would cost five hundred to a thousand dollars. It's free. They come to breaks. It's free. They can make a donation if they want. Obviously, pay. Well, it don't they, so don't we you can. have them pay a, pay a registration fee up front? That gets them there. And then they choose whether to let you keep the money or, or if they want it back. Right. We started doing that a few years ago. We had to get deposits because people weren't showing up. Okay, uh, so, so you're not doing that anymore? You well, don't no, have to we're do still, it? Well, we, that we ensures do that. that they'll because be there. Yeah. We, right, we have right. to make sure they're there because we've got all these instructors and all these vehicles. We're all ready to go, and then they don't show up. So we say, send us the $99. Once you come and show up, we'll give you the $99 right, back. So, so walk me through the process. What do you teach them that perhaps they would never learn in driver's ed? Well, besides that's everything, it, not drivers. Yet. Yeah. So <laughs> what we're drivers teaching them. First thing we start out with is seating position, like where to sit in the car. You know, uh, when we grew up. Well, why don't we do that? Let's yeah. do that. Okay. So let's. Yeah, let's see. Let's we can train Carlos. Car no, let's see. Let's if we can train you. This Carlos. is a Kia. Now, is Kia a sponsor of your? Uh, Kia is. Yeah. Kia okay. provides all the vehicles for our Official school. Vehicle. Uh, they provide. Uh, let's see, forty-five vehicles, and they transport them around the country for us. So it's a it's a really neat. All right. So uh, Andrew, relationship let's walk in. Show us how you sit in a car. Let's let's start with that. Okay. So sitting in the car. Well, it's like when we were kids, this in the center of the steering wheel when we were kids was a horn button. Mm -hmm. Well, now there's an airbag here that comes out at 200 miles per hour. So the, the distance you are away from the steering wheel is really, really important. And where you have your hands on the steering wheel is really important. If you have your hands here or here, I got a watch on. I have my hand right there with that watch Boom. on. Guess what? That airbag goes up, pow, break my nose. Mm -hmm. With your hands in the proper position on here, they go up to the side. Never thought of fine. that, actually, I, until you just told me. So, and you probably uh, drive like that, too, uh, on occasion. Yeah, I drive hands-free. I let the car do its work. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, so, no. Okay, so, no. So, okay, so then they're sitting there, and they're pro hands Seeing on the wheel. Where, like this right here is called a dead pedal. That's, a, that's where you, you put your, uh, your leg down there, and you need to have a bend in your leg. Because with a straight leg, if you get into some kind of a oh. frontal impact, you're going to break your hip. You've got all kinds of problems. If you've got your leg bent, you're, be, you're, you're, you're really better off. And also your arms, but you can't be straight on your arms. You gotta be All right, so, all right, so what, then you, you turn the car on, you start it up, what's next? Well, then we take the teenagers out through uh, specific courses with them behind the wheel. Uh, with turns and stops and everything. Well, we're doing uh, a panic stopping. You know, how many t uh, teenagers or parents even for that matter drive and they have never activated their anti-lock brakes. They don't know what they feel like. And then as soon as they do, wow, what's that? The first uh, thing that most people do when they activate it is let off because it- And then know, they hit shaking, something. And then they hit something, yeah. So we're teaching them, how does the anti-lock brake system work? What's it sound like? What's it feel like? And this is 
how, this is the capabilities that it gives you. Now, so uh, that's I understand one thing. that one of the things that I learned uh, having taken a driving course like this was that it takes the speed away from you. You ne then become respectful of the vehicle, what it can do, and how right. it can harm you, and how it can harm others, right? Well, exactly. That's a big part of what we're doing. We're trying to teach the teenagers and their parents. We require the parents to come too, and Kia gives us a separate set of vehicles, and a, we have a separate set of instructors for the parents. So the parents are with one set of instructors, the teenagers are with another set of instructors, because we want to bring the parents up to speed too. Doug Herbert, thank you so much for being here. It's called Brakes. Uh, the website? Yeah, putonthebrakes.org is a great place. We've got videos, a lot of information, safe driving contracts. It's a wealth of knowledge. Fantastic. Here. Dave, did you learn anything today? I learned a ton every I'm time I I'm going to close do the that. door on him and say thank you very much. <laughs> Doug, we'll be right back with more Good Morning San Diego in just a moment. Drive safely. <laughs>